goes. But, dudes, though, I have been Justice utterly enthralled Brat Jam. with this Linus Tech Tips thing. Dude, what a fucking... What a fiesta. What an absolute fiesta. I assume some of you guys have heard about this. What an absolute goddamn fiesta this has turned into. Right? This has turned into an absolute fiesta. That's the whole thing? Yeah, man. That is a whole thing. <laughs> uh, like, tech drama? Yeah, so uh, this video came out yesterday. Uh, my, what I'm learning here over watching like a few of these videos and stuff uh, is if you insult Gamers Nexus, like even slightly, they come after you so hard. They will go, they will dig through your, like, your fucking Twitter history and everything. They will find every detail they can to crush you into fucking next week. They are not happy with anybody who slags them off. Because I, I, I believe, from what I can tell as an outsider, I don't know any of these guys. I don't have uh, any uh, reach in the tech YouTube space at all. Uh, but I believe it started with ago, some... This clip from an LTT lab tour got a lot of attention on... All right, so somebody visited the LTT the labs. I'm not sure who this is. Murph's Gaming. I believe this is somebody who works for Linus uh, for LTT. Between us and somebody like Gamers Nexus or Hardware Unboxed is we test new components, new tests every time. And then so during this, uh, this YouTube tour, this Murph's Gaming tour of the labs, uh, this dude kind of implies that these other channels like Gamers Nexus don't retest their hardware each every time that they have to do tests, right? So when they're testing a GPU or something. And it seems like Gamers Nexus took that personally. <laughs> took that personally. Made this 44-minute video trashing LTT for inaccuracies, uh, mistakes they'd made in graphs. Now, most of it, honestly, I kind of thought was bullshit, if I'm being completely honest in what I saw. Uh, is So it had like a section that LTT's employees agree they make too many videos. They make 25 YouTube videos a week. 25 YouTube videos a week is what they're producing. Uh, which is just fucking nuts, like absolutely nuts to not only come up with the topics that are going to be in there and the editing and all that, but providing the hardware, the testing that needs to go into those. Like the, obviously we make videos here um, and the sheer amount of stuff that goes on outside of the actual finished product is massive and that just scales exponentially. Uh, so it starts off with like LTT is rushing these things and their own employees agree. Restrictive time constraints. Let's publish less videos. I wish we could back off the amount and focus on quality for a bit. Uh, more time for projects would be good. Just So general feeling amongst the team is we just do not have time to double check the videos. For example, uh, we're making a video right now that we have a video review on it tonight. I believe it's then going to the top tier Patreons and then it has three more days of fine tuning and refinement before we put it out uh in the style we want to with youtube going forward which is we're, we're aiming for like legacy style videos as the norm and we're probably going to remove uh, or not remove but like stop making a lot of the like opinion pieces over on the main channel they'll move to the highlights we talked about the other day on the stream uh but like this is one video it's like i think the current rough is like 20 minutes i would prefer it to be about 15 so we're going to go through it, chop it down, see what bits, see where people lose interest and get bored and they like change that in some way. You know, all these little bits and bobs, but they're, they're throwing 25 videos out. There clearly is not the time for that. Uh, then there was, uh, this isn't drama. <laughs> uh, bad data. See, I didn't really care about this too much, although I noticed this one. I think on this, I think on our stream, when this review came out of the 4090, I think we talked about this graph, because I remember this being so weird. So, so weird. Is that it was like so, so much better. It was like ridiculous how much better the 4090 was than a 3090 Ti. Like, it just was almost nonsensical just how how powerful this card seemed, right? And I remember looking at it, I was like, what the f... Wait, what? 
It's that powerful. It's crazy. Yeah, I think we talked about it on here. It's like, this is nuts. This is absolutely crazy. Uh, but it was wrong. <laughs> uh, it just seemed so out of place that even me as a kind of casual viewer who's like, what's Beth graphics card? As I assume most of us are. We're like, Jesus Christ, what the hell? This thing is fucking monstrous. Uh, but also there's a certain level of trust. But then it got like worse with this Billet Labs thing. If you didn't know about this. So there was like errors in writing. See, this stuff I don't super care about personally. This could easily slip through the net. They were talking about like it's actually 3 meg of L2 cache. But I also take from the perspective of Gamers Nexus that is prides itself on its real technical accuracy down to like the formations of the, the wind flow through... Uh, using them like chambers and stuff to see how the wind reacts. And to them, this is a massive deal. Uh, like, it's an inexcusable error. I, I'm a little bit more laid back than that. I was like, yeah, okay, we've, we fucked up on this graphic overlay. Are we going to remake the video because we put four instead of three? No. No, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. Uh, like, I, I'm not going to do that. As a, certainly, certainly as a small, a, a small little team here, like, yes, okay. Because it'd be Chris that edits it, right? So it's like Chris put four instead of three. Maybe I'd notice it. Maybe Nups would notice it or whatever. It'd be like, are we going to change the video because of that? No, no, we're not. We'll put in a comment. Yeah, we'll put in a comment. We'll do something like that. I, I don't think this is as big a deal as Gamers Nexus sees as it is. But they are like all about very technical specifications. And for them, and considering the size of LTT, it's like an inexcusable mistake. I think, it, I think Steve actually says that. He's like, this is just absolute roughshod shit. Can't do that. Uh, Verdant Bank. Yeah, I mean, that would be the classic example is I always get the names wrongs of places. And typically because I have hundreds of thousands of zone locations from a million games running through my head. It's Verdant Brink. It's Tangled Depths. It's fucking, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. But I do work under the proviso as much as it annoys some people who like specificity is that you absolutely know what I'm talking about. Right, you can actually me all day, but you 100% know what I'm talking about. Am I going to re-record 25 minutes of dialogue or whatever after the videos come out to correct that? No, I'm probably not going to do that. I'm probably not going to do that. Like, that, that, if you don't know what I've heard of bring, I don't know what he's talking about. Like, it, it, yeah, there's there's very little chance you know you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but I do. I have taken videos down in the past where I'm like, okay, that's uh, certainly when I did the wow guides. If like. Uh, the classic would be I did a video and it was accurate, but then like immediately after I posted the video, Blizzard changed something. That was the worst. That was the absolute worst. Uh, and it was a nightmare because they literally, as I post the video, they like patch it and change it and like rework something. And it's like, Jesus fucking Christ, dude. And it actually led me into trouble with people at Method, if you remember. Like they'd watched one of my videos, uh, even though it was like a year or so out of date. Uh, and we're like, yeah, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about because this talent doesn't work that way or something like that. Like, it led to problems later down the line when people were checking things and they were like, oh, yeah, this is this guy's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I was like, eh, this is what it is. Spreading misinformation. If you're going to commit to making guides and stuff, spreading misinformation is, is a problem, right? You need to be fully aware of that. That's why I think currently with the way WoW changes its classes on an almost weekly basis, uh, the written guide is actually superior to the video guide. And that's kind of, you know, one of the big reasons we stopped doing it is like, we just can't keep up with what Blizzard does anymore. Like, it's just impossible. They're changing stuff so much. Anyway, uh, coming back down here, um, it then got worse with this Billet Labs ethical concerns. So what happened with this thing is a company called Billet Labs made an $800 solid copper water cooling block, Right? And it was designed, it was like really super machined for a specific, I think it's designed for the, it was the pro, yeah, they sent LTT the prototype to get their name out there and get their interest out there. Uh, and it was built for a very specific GPU. Was it a 3090? Something like that, right? Yeah, it doesn't fit any PC in the world. Yeah, this is where it gets kind of like mixed on which side you choose on this for a 3090. And they didn't have one. Yeah, it's like a giant copper block thing uh, that you, that is difficult to put on and it needs a very specific thing. However, when LTT tested it, they did it on the wrong GPU. So it didn't fit. <laughs> it didn't fit the GPU they were doing it on. And they admit it in the video is that they did not have the GPU that the fucking thing was machine designed to go on. 
Like it was very specifically designed to go on one type of GPU and they didn't use that GPU. And so it like didn't work like at all. Now they still posted the video and their conclusion was you should never ever buy this copper block. Like it's terrible. You should never buy it. No one should ever buy it. And then they doubled down on it when people were like, hey, oh, the, these Billet Labs people came back and said, hey, you've put it on the wrong fucking GPU. Uh, it would have been, it would have worked better on another GPU. And then they doubled down on it. So it's like a big chunky thing like this. Uh, they needed all these steps and stuff to put on it. It's a big chunky copper block thing that goes on it. So when they got called out on it on the WAN show, uh, Linus's take was, and I see where he's coming from, but he's incorrect in my opinion is that it doesn't matter if we'd use the right GPU or got better testing results. Incoming ad break? What the fuck? Go away. I'm talking. Um, is because the the device itself is so fucking dumb to put on anyway. Six glorious years. I, I would never Chris. recommend it, even if it did something else. Like, it's so stupid to put on. It's his, his mindset is, it doesn't matter. I think he says it here. It's like, it doesn't matter if it would run 20 degrees cooler or whatever. Let's, let's listen. Then it would be if used properly. The conclusion is like it's a cool product but it's a bad it, product it looks great yeah it looks super cool are you just saying it's bad don't think just they... purely because of the price it's bad because it makes absolutely no sense and nobody should buy it most of the community is actually really amazing but there's a vocal minority that looks at something like that and goes Phew lazy out of touch you know whatever else no i'm just really experienced at this I mean, you got it. crap. Did you put it in a package? <laughs> <laughs> Get a shot of that. Look at that. <laughs> it founds this conclusion on the basis of improper installation. This serves no. Yeah, it's it's kind of goofy. Uh, so and then he, I think he said it's like it, it's, uh, I can't remember where it is because I watched this whole thing last night. I was totally into this. Problems that were raised and explain them. Before. Yeah, so they, uh, that Billet Labs people went into the YouTube comments. They're like, Felix here from Billet Labs. Great video. But this block was specifically for a 3090 Ti and not a 4090. We've since obtained a 4090 to test with it, and using it with the 3090 Ti block leaves a gap of around one millimeter over the die. So if you know anything about PC cooling, this is not good. So it is never going to cool properly. We're happy to answer any questions in the comments below. We love LTT, but it was difficult to watch their criticisms when pretty much every design issue that Linus raised was done for a reason, which was all explained to Adam weeks ago. Adam, somebody who works at LTT. None of which, I guess, was fed back to Linus. We also sent a full instruction manual that seemingly wasn't used. I think there's definitely been a major communication breakdown along with the video pipeline. We assumed we'd have a chance to answer any problems that were raised and explain them before it being publicly misrepresented. So obviously this could kill this company. LTT is so big. If they like take your prototype product and say you should never ever buy this product and they didn't test it correctly... That could kill a business, right? That could absolutely kill your business outright. The word of mouth is out there. When people Google your company, that video is likely to come up instead of your company. That's how the algorithm works, right? It has way more traction. It has way more attention. So if you start Googling that water block, like, hey, what's this water block thing? It's, it's likely to come up with that video and fuck you over completely. Uh, but they didn't take it down. It then got worse, though, because <laughs> it then got worse is this Billet Labs company was like, yeah, okay, whatever. This is our prototype, though. We need it back to, like, work on it and maybe to give out to other media outlets uh, for the same purposes, right? Uh, LTT then auctioned the damn thing off. <laughs> At their uh, a convention. Look, there it is. They auctioned it off. So Billet Labs said we need it back. They had an agreement saying they they were going to get it back. And instead of giving it back, they fucking auctioned it off for charity. And there were cooling system competitors at the event who could have just bought this thing and just duplicated it if they wanted to or, like, checked the design and done whatever to it. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, they could have done whatever the fuck they want with it. Uh, they auctioned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it gets it gets even better. It gets better. So not only did they not return it, uh, they actually auctioned it off to people uh, at a charity thing at the LTT convention. Uh, I don't think there's going to be a lawsuit or whatever, but not good. Obviously, a miscommunication there. This, this, I, I, I don't 
sense maliciousness, just a total miscommunication that they had this thing and someone threw it on for the auction block or whatever uh, without getting the message that was supposed to be blah, 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 blah. But still, and a, a, consider- a considerable tornado of fuck-ups all the way down the line. All the way down the line. Just a nasty, nasty stream of fuck-ups. Uh, I, I, what do you think about this one? I, I want your opinion on this one. As you guys have dealt with a lot of different mice in the in the line, so this this was a mouse review, the Onage Ponage Stormbreaker. Another example of this just popped up recently as we were finishing this video in the short circuit video where Linus Media Group reviewed a mouse in their not a review. The company made strong criticisms of the friction of the mouse in the video. <laughs> this is not a smooth mouse, and that's really disappointing. Uh, especially on like a premium gaming mouse, that should be one of the primary focuses. Ponage then contacted LMG to notify them that LMG had not removed the protective film from the feet of the mouse. <laughs> Linus noted in the WAN show that the short circuit team then posted a pinned comment saying that, in fact, there weren't any stickers on the mouse at the time of testing and that they stood by their commentary of the product. <laughs> the bigger issue here is that our initial correction, which was posted, said, hey, no, it you know, is high friction, and we did test it, and there were no films on the feet. Ponage then tweeted publicly with an abrasive statement, but one for which we can't fault them. They point out the irony of being chosen as a gift for LTX's whale land attendees, despite the conclusion of the video being this. The only question that remains is, am I recommending you buy this product? No. This, we don't think, is... So what they're saying is, they, do you recommend buying this? No, it's a terrible mouse. They then put it apparently in the gift bags for the top contributors to their event. <laughs> what you... <laughs> so funny. <laughs> about buying favor, but rather the dichotomy between being chosen and then having such an egregious it gets error worse. It does. unfairly undermine the integrity of the product and its chief marketing point. LMG then eventually began the process of replacing the video in place once again. We assume I didn't know this existed, and I so wish we had access to this functionality, but even Gamers Nexus doesn't have it, and they're way bigger than our channel. There's the ability on YouTube for certain content creators to literally swap a video in place without losing the views and the algorithm traction it had. Give me that functionality. Like, what the f- what the f? Like, what- what the hell? That's a thing! Yeah, LTT has apparently had this for years, is that you can completely change a video as long as it has the same title, I guess, or whatever with different content and it maintains its views its date its history everything all the metadata that goes with it stays the same but the video is different it's called change in place right so if you release a video that is full of monstrous errors and you're like i mean i've had this with legacy videos in fact it was the legacy of the paladin uh the legacy of the paladin that i released had already reached i don't know like six hundred thousand views or something in a few days and that's when the guy reached out to me who I'd, I'd, I'd emailed this guy five times to say I wanted to use some of his clips from Nax Ramis, but he hadn't posted on YouTube in like nine years. No reply, nothing. And so I was like, okay, it's probably not a big deal. And we used, I think, eight seconds of it, something like that. Eight seconds in wh- however long that video was, like 40 minutes or something. So it hit like 600,000 views. And then the guy emailed me saying, I'm suing you um, and I'm taking the video down. And he copyright striked the video. And I was like, what the fuck? So the video went down and obviously my like Twitter and stuff was blowing up. was like, where's the legacy of the Paladin gone? I was recommending it to people, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, this guy was doing it. Uh, and so, and he wanted money. I think he asked me for like $3,000 or something to get it out. And I was like, dude, you're not being realistic. One, if we took this to fair use, you would never, ever, 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 ever have a chance in hell of claiming your seven seconds in like a 30 minute video is your, you are like, this is your content, right? This is not a thing. Um, and ultimately like, what, 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 are we, what are we trying to achieve here? And he just wanted money. That's all he wanted was money. So I had to remake the video and just cut out that seven seconds. That's it. And I was like, don't uh, forget about it. And then when I did that, I was like, forget about it. I'm re-uploading it, 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 whatever. 
then he was he was pissed off then and then he was like no 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 i still want my footage in there because and then he told me that his friends saw it and his friends told him that i had used one of his clips in his videos and were really happy about it so his friends like dude did you see like there's a little clip of you in like the latest pre- preach gaming video uh it's awesome right do you remember when we were back in knacks and got them talking again like you know all that kind of stuff like from nine years ago it's like do you remember that stuff and then he was like all upset and i'm like are you joking like you literally took my video down and are asking me for money and now you're annoyed that i'm cutting you out of it completely but god dude i lost all the traction on that video i'm not sure where that video sits right now but it lost like six hundred thousand views and all the traction because of course when i re-released it people had already seen it and they're like well i'm not gonna watch it again because it was like half an hour long so it was just fucking ridiculous it was totally ridiculous what an annoying situation to be in but anyway okay so that, that this gets worse so the mouse right so the mouse the company says stop will you stop fucking trying to play ads at me what is this i've never seen this message before in my life incoming ad break ads are snoozed what is happening chris is this something we've set up is this new i've never had this in my life what the fuck is going on go away uh so <laughs> yeah so the mouse right hey you haven't taken the film off LTT then says, no, we did take the film off. The mouse isn't very good. And then days later, they say, edit. We watched through all the raw footage from the shoot. It does appear that the plastic film was still on the feet. (laughs) So they were like, no, no, no. We definitely took the feet off, uh, the plastic off. And then it's like, I think what happened is people went through the video and could see the reflective, uh, the light reflecting off the film on the bottom. Oosh this time with youtube's trim tool that'll take a day or two to process they're cutting the section about friction but this doesn't fix the problem they are choosing to leave the content live whose conclusions were at least partially based on massively erroneous work because they don't want to hurt their video performance people continued to see the original until it processed that can take a day or two but they're willing to throw ponage under the bus one last time by providing feedback that the stickers should be more obvious it's your fault however as some feedback to ponage they need to make it much clearer to their end users that the film is present as it does not have any pull tabs and is transparent providing very little information that is there unless you know to look for it so it's your fault though it's your fault i'm I'm surprised people still do that i just got this mouse it didn't have protective film on it this logitech pro super light that i use for the stream pc uh i don't think i've ever bought a mouse that didn't have film in it i don't think this one did but um i can't remember honestly i think i would notice though like there's no mouse i find it hard to believe a mouse would come out now that doesn't slide across a quality preach gaming mouse mat which of course you all have so you know what i'm talking about but yeah with roughness or anything i think you would feel it it would feel wrong in some way but i don't know uh i've i i could also say i've definitely noticed I that this um, and it nicely put things to word that i had what? felt in a way for ages about ltt gn simps rise up I, I see ltt as entertainment i don't watch ltt anymore for like if i'm shopping for a gpu i don't watch ltt i would watch gamers nexus but if i want a fun video i'm not watching gamers nexus <laughs> if i want a fun tech video i'm not watching gamers nexus right <laughs> that's it's the, it's where you get your that kind of thing like i i would not uh i wouldn't do that if i wanted to s- some fun stuff then uh i wouldn't go over there that would not be where i'd go <clears throat> yeah why not both i do watch both like i'm not have a, i don't have a dog in this fight i don't have a dog in it but uh <clears throat> oh here's a photo of what the pony stormbreaker looks like the plastic still on its feet so they provided evidence as well user made- i think when i stopped taking ltt seriously was the whole room water cooling project they did in the house long before they had studios and stuff where they had like copper pipes going up bedroom walls and shit into the into the bath that was in the nearby bathroom it was so dumb it was outrageously fucking dumb uh from start to finish and cost god knows how much money to make that happen maybe but an end user doesn't get oh but then it goes on <laughs> then it goes on this is why i've been so invested in this uh linus then responded yeah we got the old response baller we got it there it is we got the response da, 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 da. i love a good response here we go we, we, we got a twit longer going with it 
There will not be a big one show segment about this or anything. Why? There absolutely should be. There absolutely should be. A hundred percent. That's your place where you communicate directly with your audience. You're YouTubers, not streamers. This is your chance to do that. Most of what I have to say, I've already said, and I've done so privately. To Steve, I expressed my disappointment that he didn't go through proper journalistic practices in creating this piece. He has my email and number, along with numerous other members of our team, and could have asked me for context that may have proven to be valuable, like the fact that we didn't sell the monoblock, but rather auctioned it for charity due to a miscommunication. And the fact that while we haven't sent payment yet, we have already agreed to compensate Billet Labs for the cost of their prototype. There are other issues, but I've told him that I won't be drawn into a public sniping match over this and that I'll be continuing to move forward in good faith as part of team media when, if he's ready to do so again, I'll be ready. Right. It is proper. I've run out of snoozes. Right, we're going to get an ad in three minutes, apparently. I've run out of snooze. Sorry, non-subs. Sorry, you, you're going to get ad, You're going to get an ad in two minutes and 49 seconds. You've got two minutes and 49 seconds to subscribe to the channel, and you can avoid the ad. You're on, you're on, a, you're on a timer. Um, it is normal uh, to reach out for comment. Right? It is normal to reach out for comment if you're going to do a piece specifically targeting some person. To reach out for some comment to give them opportunity to respond and stuff. Um, which, I mean, that is true. It is very normal if you're going to do a, a piece on somebody and pick apart their content or whatever. Uh, why bother is a liar? It's, it's considered normal practice to do that. It's, uh, depending on where you lie on these things, it is considered normal practice, normal practice to reach out for comment hey, we're going to discuss these things um, uh, about you specifically, that we're talking about you. Uh, that way, it isn't just a hit piece, right? It, it covers that boundaries of not just being a hit piece where you just make a piece of content about somebody and just attack them. Uh, or just like all negative without going. It's part of journalism to reach out and say, hey, we're doing these things. Um, I mean, they would do it if they were doing a piece on a processor and they were getting weird results or whatever, you would reach out to AMD or Intel or whatever and be like, hey, just to let you know, we've received your processor. We've tested it. We've done all our stuff. This is the results we're getting, which is really odd. Do you have any comment on this? Before just making a video, because you might have got a bad sample. That happens to everybody, right? Uh, so, it, you know, that company can then go, oh, Jesus Christ, you must have got some really weird damaged sample or something. Uh, let me send another one before you make like a super negative video uh putting it out there but it turns out that you just had to happen to have a bad one it's very normal to reach out and get some form of comment uh about a person if you're if you're going for the journalistic approach which is what gamers nexus was doing so i do agree with that you should reach out and have contact before that happened at least then you you could also then say we reached out to ltt uh for comment on these things uh and it didn't uh do anything <laughs> you know what i mean they, they were like yeah we'll, we'll change we'll do better uh yeah you, oh, hey you used our product to the wrong gpu exactly like that's exactly what should happen like reaching out for comment especially if you're getting i personally uh only do this if i i, I don't know whether this is wrong maybe you guys could police me on this one i only ever do this if we get something that's terrible uh usually it's games so eso would be a prime example right eso sent uh offered me a hell of a lot of money in order to uh, check that, uh, to check Elder Scrolls Online when it was first launching, they sent me the game. I played it for about five hours off stream because it, we had embargoes, so I had to play it off stream. And I just said, "I hate this game. It's not for me. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it alone." One, I'd never played Elder Scrolls, as you guys know. I hadn't played Skyrim or Oblivion or anything, uh, so that bit's lost on me entirely. And the combat is really weird and not particularly good. And so I, I was like, I don't particularly like this game. Uh, so I just sent it back. I was like, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to make a video bashing on it because this game clearly is not for me. Uh, but it is whatever. Like we're doing something similar with Palia now. Palia is not a game for me. However, Bex loves it. Bex absolutely loves it, as do several members of our community. But I'm not into those kind of games. It doesn't mean we shouldn't talk about it because it's doing a lot of things, uh, good and bad, as we looked at the other day with the monetization. So Bex is putting the notes and stuff together for it uh, to give it that aspect. And then I have my point of view and Bex's point of view uh, to go in with it with. 
So yeah, it's for chill. It's for relaxing. I tend to be very not highly strung, but I'm a, I'm impatient. <laughs> Put it that way. Uh, I'm very impatient. I want things to go go go. Uh, so it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, exactly. So we're doing that with Parlia right now. I couldn't do that back in the day because we didn't have the team working for us. But um, it, it's the way it goes. Uh, anyway, that's paragraph one. Uh, but I do agree with Linus on this. You should reach out and say, hey, we're doing this piece. It's criticizing you. These are the things we're talking about. Do you have any comment on it? You can't. You don't need to change the content at all. Like, you don't need to do that at all. If they come back with, like, some, some bullshit, they come back with some bullshit. Like, it is what it is. Uh, but you, can, you still sh- should ask. Uh, to my team and my CEO's team, uh, but realistically, I was at the helm for all of these errors, so I need to own it. I stress the importance of diligence in our work. Oh, I will point out here, it not being sold but auctioned makes no difference. <laughs> I don't know why this line is in here. The fact that we didn't sell the model block but auctioned it. Like, that, that's just so stupid. I don't know why that was in there uh, at all. That's so dumb. It makes, like, it makes a difference to Billet Labs. Like, oh, no, no, we didn't sell it. We gave it away. Like, <laughs> that doesn't matter to anybody, right? Uh, I was at the helm for all these errors, so I need to own it. I stress the importance of diligence in our work because there's so many eyes on us. We're going through some growing pains. We've been very public about them in the interest of transparency. And it's clear we have some work to do on the internal process and communication. We've already been doing a lot of work internally to clean up our processes, but these things take time. Rome wasn't built in a day. It's true. It took NUPS like fucking how long, team, to transfer us to the Google uh, ecosystem? It takes ages to do this shit. Like, I'm not slugging nups off here, but it, it took fucking ages to transfer us from our old systems to what we use now. It's a right pain in the ass. I'm very glad I didn't have to do it and nups did it. But Jesus Christ, like, changing all internal processes is just such a nightmare. It really is. Just a giant pain in the ass. And then you have to get everybody to use the damn thing, uh, which is uh, even harder, I find, is you can implement as many processes as you want, but getting people to use them is really hard. I had to rearrange all my phone apps. Re- re- There's nothing worse than resetting up email accounts, especially if you use, like, seven, like I do. Like, it's ridiculous. Uh, we already have been doing a lot of work in Silly to clean up our processes, blah, blah, blah. Now, for my community, all I can say is the same things I always say. We know we're not perfect. We wear our imperfection on our sleeves in the interest of ensuring that we stay accountable to you. But it's sad and unfortunate when this transparency gets warped into a bad thing. The labs team is hard at work creating processes and tools to generate data that will benefit all consumers. A work in progress that is very much not done uh, that we communicated needs to be treated as such. Do we have notes on some videos? Yes. Is it because we are striving for transparency and improvement? Yeah. What we're doing hasn't been in many years, if ever, and we would make a much larger correction if the circumstances merited it. Listing the wrong amount of cash on a table for a CPU review is sloppy, but given that our conclusions are drawn based on our testing, not the spec sheet, it doesn't materially change the recommendation. That doesn't mean that these things don't matter. We set KPIs for our writing labs team around accuracy, and we are continually installing new checks and balances to ensure that things continue to get better. If you haven't seen the improvement, frankly, I wonder if you're looking for it. The thoroughness that we managed on our last handful of GPU videos is getting really incredible given the limited time we have for these embargoes. Uh, I'm really excited about what the future will hold. Right, that's a terrible response. Uh, There is some merit of truth in that, uh, is too much transparency can be used against you. Uh, it's, it's happened to us many, many times. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is all kind of garbage. <laughs> I mean, it's it's like using bits of truth to mask the the bad, right? That's the thing. Because like the bits he chose here, like the L, the CPU cache, I agree, it's not a particularly big deal. But the other stuff is a big deal. Uh, but so using that piece is not relative. You know what I mean? Yeah, talk about the mouse. Talk about the things you actually, like, really screwed up. That's more important than whether or not you put a wrong graphic in with the right amount of cash on it. Um, with all that said, I still disagree that the Billet Labs video, not the situation with the return, which I've already addressed above, is an accuracy issue. It's more like I just read the room wrong. We could have retested it with perfect accuracy. But to do so properly, accounting for which cases it could be installed in, none, and which radiators it would be plumbed with, again, mystery, would have been impossible, 
and also did not affect the conclusion of the video or so i thought i think he mentioned it might have cost them 500 dollars to retest it properly yeah i mean how much money did that video make right <laughs> that video made a lot more than 500 dollars so <laughs> Uh, I, I, I'm fully aware of the extra cost at the back of it, but you can't just put out But I mean the, the second they realized the GPU was wrong. I would have stopped the videos like what are we doing? No, we can't make this go find a proper GPU and I'll be back later because obviously he has to move around lots of other things But as soon as you find out you're using the wrong GPU that it's designed for you stop you're like what are you doing? Why have you got the wrong GPU? Go and find the other one. We haven't got one. Go and pick one up like we can't test this. We'll do the video next week. You know, put it back on the schedule or something. It's fix it. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to evaluate it as a product. And as a product, if it could manage to compete with the temperatures of the highest end blocks on the planet, it still wouldn't make sense to buy. So from my point of view, retesting it and finding out that, yes, it did in fact run cooler made no difference to the conclusion. So it didn't really make any difference. That's like it's such a half truth he's right but without doing the proper testing and showing that you tested it properly to still arrive at the same conclusion nobody gives a fuck and you just look like you fucked them over like that's the problem like i don't disagree that his conclusion is probably the same but without testing it properly and showing that you gave it a fair shout nobody cares like you didn't test it properly right that's what it is then why did you test it at all uh, well they tested it to show it was un you know it was unworkable or whatever but that's not the point you tested it wrong and uh even i think luke in the uh video was like we still should have tested it properly because we're drawing a conclusion on wrong testing although the conclusion is it's an unworkable piece of shit regardless even if it is or isn't i don't know i haven't used it uh it doesn't matter we still tested it wrong uh, Adam and I were talking about this today. He advocated for retesting it regardless of how non-viable it was as a product. See, everybody knew because you should have known. And I guarantee as soon as he got that GPU and it was the wrong one, his gut, because I have this same response as well, his gut says we should stop. And he's probably had an internal mental battle with like, have I got time to reevaluate this? Does this video need to be out tomorrow? Blah, 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 blah that made him go okay we'll push forward right you have that internal battle sometimes it's like well we need to push forward it has to happen uh and uh, you have this mental battle but your gut instinct is this is wrong and we should stop uh he advocated for retesting it regardless of how non-viable it was as a product at the time i think he expressed really well today why we should have done that it was like making a video about a supercar it doesn't matter if no one watching is going to buy it they just want to see it rip I missed that, but it wasn't because I didn't care about the consumer. It was because I was so focused on how this product impacted a potential buyer. Either way, clearly my bad. But my intention was never to harm Billet Labs. I specifically called out their incredible machining skills because I wanted to see them create something with a viable market for it and was hoping others would appreciate the finesse of the craftsmanship, even if the product was impractical. <sighs> I still hope they move forward building something else because they obviously have talent. I've watched countless niche water cooling vendors come and go. It's an astonishingly unforgiving market. Uh, and yet they did. Yeah, that's the thing. And also you are the, you're just having egg on your face because you're the company that makes water cooling solutions that involve industrial strength fans, refrigerators, dry ice, setting a pc on fire i think is what they did a couple of months ago right they literally had one that was on fire using some sort of convection to cool the pc so and they set the monitor on fire doing it like you go into all these lengths to do silly cooling videos and then not doing one who's trying to do a good video uh, or make a good product it's fair shout it just doesn't add up there's, a, there's so much hypocrisy there you can't do that either way i'm sorry i got the community's priorities mixed up on this one and that we didn't show the billet in the best light. Our intention wasn't to hurt anyone. We wanted no we wanted no one to buy it because it is an egregious waste of money, no matter what temperature it runs at. <laughs> Still fucking slapping the baller down. Still, don't buy it though. Like for real. It's really bad. <laughs> like, don't buy it. Uh, and we wanted Billet to make something marketable so you they can, you know, eat. Oh, they were doing them a favor. They were doing you a favor. 
Uh, with all this in mind, it saddens me how quickly the pitchforks were raised over this. Really? On the internet? Rumor is enough. Rumor is enough on the internet, and you know that, Linus, to bring all your haters to the forefront every single time, and they will come from everywhere. They'll crawl out like rats in the sewer. It also comes across as a touch hypocritical when some basic due diligence could have helped clarify much of it. I have a long history of meeting issues head on, and I have never been afraid of answering questions. There'll be no one show this week, by the way, uh, which no, they won't talk about on the one show, which lands me in hot water regularly, but helps keep me in tune with my peers and the community. The only reason I could think of not to ask me is because my honest response might have been inconvenient. We can test that with this post. I can't imagine something like this coming out about me and me not addressing it on stream. Like, that would be so weird. That would be so, so weird. Like, a big community outcry about something like this? <sighs> nah. Uh, will we? It was a mistake, a bad one, but a mistake. <laughs> and they're taking care of it. Really managed to have the same reach. Let's see if anyone actually wants to know what happened. Oh, milking. Ask me and I might talk about it. I hope so, but it's been disheartening seeing how many people are willing to jump on us here. Believe it or not, I'm a real person. And so is the rest of my team. We're trying our best. Uh, what we're doing, if what we're doing was easy, everyone would do it. Today sucks. Thanks for reading this. Oh. Oh. Linus, man, you cannot be a bitch at the end. You can't do that. You can't be a bitch at the end and play the victim card. It can't work. Uh, you did this with a POE2 demo. You have an extra video to, uh, to add extra context. Yeah, 100%. It's important. Uh, and I said that to Grinding Gear Games uh, when they were like, hey, we're trying to get as much word out about POE. This is the conversation I had. on. Uh, I got messaged while I was at the event by Grinding Gear. And they were like, hey, uh, we want to make sure as much PoE2 stuff is out as possible. Can you put out the PoE2 video on your main channel? We would love that. And I was like, yeah, but I'm not going to do it now because, frankly, your messaging about what we're showing has not been the best. Uh, and I want to add some context as to what people are seeing because all I'm seeing from the community is like, wow, they made PoE2 really, really hard for some reason. Uh, and it looks really slow and it looks really, like, unworkable. And it doesn't look like PoE1 and I don't like it. So I was like, let's put some context to it. Um, otherwise, we're just may maybe even guilty of spreading that in misinformation uh, of having me be very confused for like 20 minutes as to what's going on. Uh, Gradigir, yeah, Gradigir Games, who makes Path of Exile, not the podcast that will be on on Thursday. Uh, so that's where it's up to at this point. Uh, <laughs> not getting a great response. Uh, deflect onto the community, do needs to get his head out of his ass. Yeah, not, uh, I mean, they must have so many haters as well that are going at them. Uh, oof. So let's see what's next. <laughs> let's Sorry see what's next. Sorry to interrupt. Just wanted to Rude. celebrate Apoga's sub-anniversary. Oh, uh, 90 stream. months! The big 9-0, Braggart. Thank you so much. And may your, uh, sweeping adventures forever spread across the internet. Despite the staff saying they want higher quality, you've got to listen to your staff. Uh, you might not always agree. Me and Chris certainly have loggerheads regularly uh, about uh, ideas and stuff uh, that we, we think are right for everybody. Uh, and we usually come to some sort of compromise um, as to where we want to end up together. <coughs> uh, that's, that's usually... Uh, not bullying, but we are in a creative space. A creative space is very volatile. If you've never worked in one, it is very volatile, especially when people... Uh, me and Chris go to loggerheads a lot because when we present an idea, um, we both see it differently in our heads as to what the outcome looks like. Uh, and I'll be obviously very like... I want it this way. And Chris will be like, I think it's better this way. Usually we end up like filming both and then seeing which one comes out the best. Uh, but it, when you can't do that with like an expensive shot or something that's like kind of a, you know, we've got limited time to do. You kind of have to decide which way you're going uh, to make that work. Uh, but I think it works. It usually works out pretty well. Uh, the irony, this wouldn't happen if they didn't make 25 videos per week. Uh, it still happen. Uh, mistakes happen. there would be definitely less, sure, but, I mean, mistakes happen all the time. Um, occasionally, you remember, like, a lot of the stuff you see in videos, certainly overlay boxes and stuff, it's just a guy typing it into a box. 
Like you can mistype a million times. He might have even intended to write three, for example, and hit the four key uh, and didn't notice. Like it happens all the time. Uh, it's it's just one of those things. But um, what you could probably afford to have, even if you introduce like fact checkers and stuff, they're still going to miss things. 25 is a lot though. I mean, there's no chance. You're streaming very limitedly. Yeah. It's hard to scrap a video and you've got, uh, you have to make 25 a week, though. Yeah, that's true. Like, we scrap a lot of videos. Um, if, um, I'll be honest, usually if I'm not happy with the subject matter. Um, if, I, I, if I'm like, I don't like this. I like this. I like, we'll scrap it, even if the team's put a lot of work into it. Like, sometimes it has to happen, unfortunately. <laughs> but it is the way it is. Uh, what's the whole drama about? Just join the stream. Oh, like, um, the TLDR is that um, somebody at LTT, Lions Tech Tips, I'm sure everybody knows who they are if you've been on YouTube, uh, made a kind of off-the-cuff snidey comment in a video about how much better they were at their processes than other places like Gamers Nexus, uh, which prides itself on its accuracy and stuff. And uh, Gamers Nexus took that personally. <laughs> Look at me. I'm the tech tips man now. <laughs> the guy who bought the Billet Labs water block. <laughs> this picture is so good. It's so fucking good. It's so perfect for this. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's so... It's perfect. I have no idea what it's from, but I fucking love this meme picture. It's so good. I'm the guy now. Nine Linus theft tips. Oh my god, a nice prototype. It would be a shame if we auctioned it. Look at the size of that thing. Do I give it back? I don't know. Like, uh, I don't know. Oh god, the Billet Labs jumped on it as well. We are Billet Labs. Eleven. They jumped right on it. Maybe you've heard of us. Thank you sincerely. I mean, fair play to them jumping on this while the conversation's going. If you fancy supporting us, we do have some more affordable products on our website. Please consider them for any future builds. Heart. What happened recently is a blip. We will not be stopped. Yeah. Jump in and get paid. Get that green while you can. Get it while it's going. Ah, uh, unlucky. <laughs> New LTT merch just dropped. Rip Billet Labs t-shirt. 70, $70. <laughs> Oh, God. As someone with so much YouTube experience, do you think they have uh, have to release so many videos in a week to support their size of organization? Yeah, yeah, I do. I absolutely do. YouTube is a uh, minefield. An absolute minefield. I miss it, I miss it a lot uh, doing YouTube every day. Uh, it's, it's why I'm so heavily scheduled by my team now, honestly, is to make sure I have time to do YouTube stuff. Uh, do you want to know what's sad? I was working on YouTube last night. And I resorted to pen and paper. I couldn't sit in this chair anymore. Chris is going to hate me for this, but um, I'll show you. all my notes and stuff but like i do it all i do it on pen and paper sometimes <laughs> i know it seems ridiculous and antiquated but i uh i i pref <laughs> it has a little bit yoshi p a little bit yoshi p but like i can't sit in this chair for like 17 hours man like so i just went what year is it i, I find it kind of relaxing i go and chill on the bed uh i can't find my big notebook uh, but I, and I, uh, I write all my ideas, ideas down. <laughs> Use a laptop. It's not comfortable. There's something about chilling with, uh, I don't know what it is. There's something nice about chilling with like pen and paper and just scribbling ideas and moving them around. And I can't show you what's written on the paper, but <clears throat> that's what I do. 
I think it's still best. Yeah, I do. I think if you're trying to cope with creative ideas and you're swapping things around and maybe bits and pieces of ideas work, like, it's nice to be able to just highlight things and then arrow them around and all that. That's what I used to do for novel scripts. I'd have a book open on one side. It's nice. It's really nice. Like, I'll transfer it over to the computer layer, but it is. It's really nice. I used to, That's what I used to do when I was pure YouTube. Was, um... Let's say Emma wanted to go somewhere uh, and there was a beach. I'd sit on the beach with my notebook and I'd just scribble down, like, legacy ideas that I wanted to do. Like, what are we going to put in there? If I could read my own handwriting. My handwriting is horrible and I try and hide it from my kids. Because I, I like, get on them for their handwriting. <laughs> I could read my handwriting, but, uh... <laughs> Ever can't. <laughs> Can you fax it to Chris? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean transfer? Just send Chris a photo of it. Let's just scan it in. Make it work. But that's what I was doing last night. I did that for like four hours last night. I was just like scribbling around with ideas, had some music on, and uh, just I, I just lay on my bed uh, with a notebook, uh, just scribbling away while my kids were watching something on uh, TV. I, I like it. I will not apologize. Have you considered a rocket book? It could digitally transfer your handwriting? No, I, I genuinely... I know this sounds like I'm from NeverEnding Story or something, but I don't know if any of you guys have done writing. Like, if you're writing um, something like this, there's something really, really nice about writing with a pen and paper and seeing it in front of you and moving it around. Like, it's, it's, it's just really, really nice. And I like it. I enjoy it. I find it really soothing and relaxing, and I could just kind of, like, drift away. If I'm here, honestly, part of it is if I'm here or on my laptop, there are just too many distractions. Like I have all these monitors. I'll just crack a YouTube video on. That was funny. I want to see something else. There's just too much shit here. Like there's just, it's just too much. Going in a room and fucking chilling with a pen and paper is is nice. Uh, I like it a lot. My handwriting is immaculate. It's true. My nurses told me. <laughs> what pen am I using? Uh, I am using the Papermate Flexi Grip Ultra. Because I have a whole box of them because uh, me and Chris got tired of our lack of stationery in the office and we ordered all the stationery in the world. So I have like a hundred of these. We got so tired of... Honestly, we got so tired of Emma stealing the pens. I don't know what the fuck she's putting in. That prison wallet must look like staples or something. I don't know what the fuck's going on. But like Emma, Emma steals every pen that has ever existed every pen that has ever would i recommend it i don't give a shit i used to, i i used to have a really fancy pen this is not a fancy pen this pen this pen is about one pound from the supermarket we have packs and packs of them because emma steals them all the time that is the nature of the beast <laughs> yoink i don't know how she does it in fact i did make the mistake like three weeks ago i showed her where the pen drawer is it was all organized That's what she's left in there. She's had all the pens out of it. I'm not even fucking joking. I haven't checked this drawer in a while. Look, it's just got an empty pen packet in it. That's my wife in a nutshell. This is what we find. This is this is what I live with every fucking day. I've just checked it, and that's what's in there. It's just a completely wrecked, empty pen packet. Worst. She's, she's had... Look, there's one left. There's literally one left. She's used nine of them. She's used nine pens in a month. I showed her a month ago because she needed a pen. I was like, oh, the pens are in there. And then I knew I'd fucked up. She's had nine of the pens. It just leaves the wrappers in there. I don't know what she's using them for. I wish I knew. I 100% wish I could tell you what she's using them for, but I have no idea. She doesn't throw any pens away, as far as I know. I Sometimes I find them in the couch. Sometimes I find them, like, next to the bed. She just comes and grabs it. I think it's because she doesn't ever put things back. She's incapable of it for some reason. She can't put things back. So she, the only place she definitely knows where there's a pen is where I keep the pens. So she gets a pen, she puts it down somewhere, she forgets where she's put it, and then she's like, oh, I need a pen, and it's the only place where she knows there's definitely a pen is to go back to the fucking pen place. Ah, 